Brody, before we get started, a word from our friends at Virginia Theological Seminary. Clarify your focus. Sharpen your skills. Intensify your ministry with a doctor of ministry from VTS. As the largest Episcopal seminary in the United States, VTS offers an unparalleled, flexible DMIN program that will introduce you to the latest in congregational development and educational research. You can check them out at vts.edu or on Facebook. Okay, here's your program. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Yaw. Welcome to Church Next. And it's a place, as you know, where people who are passionate about building healthy congregations come to hear from people who have new new ideas and doing new and exciting things. And um, did you know that one of the fastest growing percentages of people who view this blog are doing? Well, they're doing it um, on their mobile devices, uh, using mobile devices to watch. And it's a huge trend right now, not just with websites and Twitter feeds, but with mobile apps. And you may have wondered, does my church need an app? With me today, a man named Chris Sharp, who helps run a company called Subsplash, which has a platform, it's called the Church App. And his company is one of, if not the largest provider of custom apps for churches. So I thought I'd just get him on the program to tell us a little bit about how churches are getting involved. Uh, Chris, let's start right there. What is an app and why would a church need one? Yeah, great question. Uh, so an application is uh, what is uh, it's software designed specifically for a device. So you know most people are familiar with iPhone apps. You know kind of this this new trend. They've seen the App Store, and it's software that's not just a website designed for everything, but uh, a specific bit of software designed specifically for that device. So an iPhone app only works on an iPhone or devices that uh, work alongside an iPhone, such as an iPod Touch or an iPad, and the same with Android. Windows Phone 7, BlackBerry, there's certain software that are called applications that are designed specifically for those phones that can really do a multiple, multiple uh, you know, number of things. So uh, whether it's, you know, you want to watch video, listen to audio, um, you know, interact, there's push notifications, all sorts of wonderful mm-hmm. features that you can design for an application. Okay. And why, and why would a church want one? So really, we've seen, you know, a huge growth with churches, and it really has to do with uh, media. So sermons are really, you know, at the top of the list for most churches. And it started, we built an app for a church here in Seattle called Mars Hill Church, uh, just as a way to serve the church and uh, putting on sermons, audio and video sermons into the app. And it really exploded, took off from there. And so churches are, you know, most churches have content that they're, you know, producing every single week. There's a sermon, there's, you know, maybe there's a pastor's blog, uh, maybe there's music they're putting in. Uh, you know, sermon notes, Sunday bulletins. There's a number of things that churches have. And really with applications, the two most successful types of apps are, number one's games, you know, which is just fun for people to play. The number two is, you know, publications or news, which churches really kind of fall in line with that because there's fresh content and there's a community that wants to access that content. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, at the top of the list is media. People can, they can listen to, you know, an audio sermon while driving in their car, sitting on the bus, you know, on a run. Um, it, it's really an amazing, you know, way to interact with media where they don't have to go uh, download the podcast. They don't have to go find it on a website. They can just open up the app and uh, immediately be accessing church content. Right, right. Okay. And uh, do, do, do you have to be rich to be able to get one? I mean, I, I think of, you know, you described a, a very large church. Is, is much yeah. your business going towards kind of medium or small churches? Yeah, great question. Yeah, we've really seen a huge growth with churches of all sizes. So obviously, you know, early on, it was a lot of those churches, the Saddlebacks of the yeah. world, the mm-hmm. Mars Hill churches. That, right. You know, they have they have big churches, they have big staff, and uh, they might have a little more budget to put towards right. technology. Mm-hmm. And two, custom development is really expensive. You know, mm-hmm. most, you know, the options when people are developing an app are you can go get it built custom uh, yeah. by a studio, and that might end up costing you, you know, $50,000 to develop an iPhone app, you know, of quality. Uh, Or you can try to build it in-house, and then you have to deal with all the, you know, difficulties of Apple, learning new code. It can be a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So what we've done is basically developed a platform that makes it a tool that everyone can have access to these rich features, you know, where they can use the audio, video, blogs, calendars, Mm -hmm. uh, social sharing, Bibles. And we we work with churches that have less than 40 people because we've really wanted to make this not only the best software available for churches trying to get their gospel-centered content out, but also make it you know as affordable as possible. So we do offer it at a discount to Christ Center Ministries, which is why we see you know everybody from the 40-person church to a person that might have a blog related to uh, theology to the mega church. Okay. So okay. So then, and and what is your entry price? Is like a thousand dollars, and then there's a monthly fee. Is that how it goes? 
yeah, we have a, a bunch of different packages. It starts at five hundred dollars, you know, go Excuse you know me. higher than that, and then there's a service fee that really takes care of everything. One of the big uh, difficulties is we love Apple; they are fantastic. Um, but we make sure that your stuff gets published properly, uh, take care of your developer's account, and then um, you know everything moving forward is a part of the service. So whether it's encoding um, OS updates, which is operating system updates, you know maybe a new iPhone comes out, new Android software, because it's not just a website, you know we have to be updating it constantly for each device. So we'll take care of all of that moving forward, full tech support, analytics, okay. bug fixes. Uh, and the content management system, where really the church is in control of the content. Okay. So, so, so that you're describing, this is kind of like having another website where you're going to have, pay yeah. somebody like you to to monthly, you know, make sure the things up there and updated. But then it, it falls upon the church to be able to say, okay, we got to put this sermon in here or this, you know, whatever it is to 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 update it on their own side. Yeah, exactly. So we'll take care of the hard stuff, and the church can focus on their content. So. They're in control of all the artwork, the branding, the layout, what features they choose, um, putting in new content sermons. They're in full control. They can change it at any time. But we'll take care of making sure that it's the proper code, that there's no errors, uh, mm -hmm. publishing moving forward, and really giving them the tools that they can make those changes at any time. Okay. Now, I heard a statistic the other day, Chris, that 60% of all apps that are downloaded are only used once. That, that there's a lot of testing out there. What is it that, that keeps people coming back to an app? And what's going to, I mean, if the average person has, what, four apps on their phone that they, they, they consistently use, right. what's going to keep my church app, you know, in, in that cadre of yeah. one of those four? Yeah. yeah, that is a really good question. And, and that kind of goes back to, there's kind of two keys to why you would want to have an app. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most, you know, a lot of people out there build maybe a novelty app. They think, Hey, we need an app. You know, it's it's such a popular trend right now. How are we going to get in the app store? You know, that's kind of what we need to do. And maybe they build an app that's just a novelty. Maybe it's just an app that doesn't serve a purpose. You want to keep people engaged. So with churches, the success we've seen has been really, really high. And so, you know, people on average spend 80 minutes a day using applications. And again, I mentioned, you know, games and news are really two of the most popular in that, you know, in that group. So with our apps, people average 30 minutes per launch. So that means when they open up, you know, a church app, they're spending on average 30 minutes inside of it, which is incredible. That's really, really high. And it's because there's constant, you know, content being uploaded. So the two keys to success we have seen is number one, the the app has to be good. The software has to be done really, really well. You know, if, if people open an app and it doesn't look right, if it doesn't work good, you know, they might delete it immediately. That might be one of those apps that kind of falls uh, as a casualty into the downloaded once and never used. Um, whereas if the software is good, and then second, there has to be relevant content and a reason for people to return. So I think that's where churches fall into kind of that sweet spot because they're pushing out content constantly. You know, whether it's new sermons, new calendar events, whether it's, you know, Sunday, Sunday bulletins or sermon notes. Um, there's a number of things churches can do to keep people engaged and wanting them to use the app, whether it's in the church service itself or beyond. You know, maybe they miss something or they want to keep up with something. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I, when I see apps in, in the App Store uh, for my particular phone, I see some of them are free, some of them are 99 cents, some of them are five bucks. Right. What, right. Why would I want to charge uh, and why do people? Yeah, yeah, that is a, that's kind of the big question. So, you know, charging for an app, you know, is not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, you know, it can, it really depends on what your market is and what you're looking to do. You know, we, we generally recommend free apps uh, for churches because we want, you know, ultimately our heart is to, we want to help people get, you know, the message of Jesus out there uh, to the best of their ability. And with free apps, the download numbers uh, are statistically much, much higher. You know, you could see downloads of anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times more with a free app versus a paid app. Um, a paid app, you know, is a is a one-time fee that you may get for your application. It may be 99 cents, um, and you may see a return on investment, um, or you may see a lot more, but you also may be missing out on a lot of people that, that may be needing your app. And, and you know, there are uh, rules in regards to charging for apps, and, you know, you don't get the full percentage and because you're using an app store, which is a great resource. Um, but that's why we generally recommend free, just because your your audience will have a lot more access to it. More people will be willing to download your content. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, you mentioned that there, uh, 
a, a, a number of different church sizes who are uh, interested in apps. What about uh, church, uh, you know, affiliations? Are there more? They, I mean, I, I tend to think they're probably more these big evangelical mega churches. But are you getting a, a, a wider berth? Yeah, definitely, and it's growing. I mean, there's you know, there's obviously churches that uh, they may want to be a little more cutting edge. You know, maybe they put more investment into their website maybe more into their media, maybe they're doing video sermons uh, as opposed to audio sermons or, or not recording anything at all. So those churches tend to be a little more at the forefront. But yeah, we are seeing, um, you know, a wide range now. So from your, you know, uh, certain denominations uh, all across the board to uh, community churches to uh, churches of all sizes. So it really has been changing. I mean, early on, again, it was, you know, your early adopters, those that kind of want to get an app out the door. And that was really when we built the Mars Hill Church app. It was really the first app of its kind back in 2009, which wasn't that long ago. But in the, in the app world, it has really taken off since. So now we, we are definitely seeing, you know, churches from, you know, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Assemblies of God to non-denominational. It's really across the board. Um, as to, to who's doing apps. Hey, could you give us an idea of, of the growth that um, is forecast for the popularity of apps? I've, I've heard some people say that, you know, in five, ten years, uh, we're just going to do everything from a mobile device. I mean, what, what, what kind of statistics come across your desk and what's your feeling? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Well, well first of all, on the device side, on what people are purchasing, um, there are over 900,000 iPhone and Android devices being activated a day, which is a, a truly a mind-boggling statistic. So people are getting a new phone, a smartphone, not just not just even a smartphone, but an iPhone or Android, which really are uh, dominating the the you know phone market right now. Uh, 900,000 a day. Yeah, yes, it's projected that you know data consumption, you know whether it's checking your email, reading news, using an application accessing the internet will actually surpass uh, computer usage in the next few years for mobile. So it'll be wild to see. Well, we're, we're interested to see, you know, the continued growth trend, but uh, so far mobile has just exploded. It's kind of where, you know, even internet usage was or website access was maybe 15 years ago. So mobile is kind of the new trend because people can do, you know, everything on the go. And I know for myself, when I got an iPhone, it really changed the way I accessed content. Where I used to read news online, now I can read it, read it in the app. You know, so I can do it on the go or anywhere I'm at. Uh, I don't have to necessarily sit down at a computer to do that. Now, I'm, on this post, I'm going to give out your URL for your uh, for your company. But uh, is there a way people can kind of check out and look and see what actually an app can look like, or or does Subsplash have an app they could download to get a gist of what the church app looks yeah. like? Yeah, there, there's a number of places. You know, the churchapp.org is our website, and you can see screenshots on there. Um, we'll be putting up more videos and, and ways for people to kind of see what what it consists of. Yeah. Uh, but also just being being able to download a few of the apps. You know, uh, maybe it's the Billy Graham Evangelical Association app or okay. the Saddleback app. Um, well, Redeemer. What are, some, what are some with the smaller churches that would? Uh, yeah, there are a number of smaller churches kind of across the board. So. Um, you know, I think of a, a church that's been with us for a long time, small church. The senior pastor manages the app entirely himself. It's called New Life Ministries Miami. Okay. Um, we have a church in Washington, D.C. that has less than 50 people who has shared the way that there's been an impact for the kingdom through the app. It's called the Tapestry Church. Uh, and it's just fantastic for us. And we, we feel blessed to have the opportunity to work with, you know, all these churches. And, and then to hear the stories of how God's, you know, really using this technology yeah. uh, for the kingdom, which is the most exciting thing for us. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, from what you're telling me, this uh, it, will every church have an app in 10 years? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, I would imagine, you know, really what I would say when people are asking if they should do an app, if you have the content that can keep people engaged and you're going to update it regularly, then it makes sense to do an app. If you don't have regular content, if you don't have a need for people to access data, then don't do an app. You know, don't worry about wasting you know resources and time and energy if it's not going to be your focus. So I think churches in the next you know few years, maybe up to five years out, that have that content, I would foresee doing you know doing a mobile app. It's it's really where people are engaged on mobile devices, so it makes sense to be there. But again, if you don't have the content, don't worry about it. Don't push it because you don't want to have an app that's. Uh, not really being utilized, just sitting in the app store. Right, right, right. So, so, so then if you if you're recording either uh, audio or video sermons, and and I don't know a lot of smaller churches that that record video sermons. Although you know, 
I, I, I've seen it. Um, and it's probably increasing, I would guess. Um, I mean, I, yeah. I look around at the way people get hired for jobs these days, and, and many times they ask for video. Right, right. Yeah, video video is huge, but also audio, uh, the simplicity and, and the features you can do with audio. So, for example, I mean, with video on a phone, you need to watch the video, you need to be looking at it. With audio, you can do so much as well. So you don't have to have video. It's just a cool tool. Um, with audio, you can you know listen in the background while multitasking. Maybe you're looking up Bible verses while listening to audio or, you know, doing some type of cross reference. Um, or you can be, you know, doing it while you're on the run or in your car. I know here in uh, Seattle, we have rules where you can't, you know, be uh, talking on your phone or using your phone um, while driving, which is probably wise not to be watching a video while driving your car. But you can be listening to an audio sermon. Maybe you're catching up. You can download it for offline listening in case you're out in an area where you don't have service. Or if you're listening to audio and a phone call comes in, it remembers where you left off so you can return right Right where you, right where you work. So uh, there's so much you can do with audio, but I do think that media of some kind okay. is such a key these days for, for people. They're accessing it like crazy, mm -hmm. and those are the two biggest areas accessed inside of our apps. Okay, okay. So it's the pastor's blog that's being written, and it's the sermon that's being recorded. Which you know, right. an MP3 recorder these days is, it, it, you know, the software is relatively easy. So um, I guess getting back to my question, which is, you know, in five or ten years. Will will mm -hmm. every church have an app? Well, you know, if if we go along this way of putting content on our websites, it looks like there will be a much higher percentage. Absolutely. Um, so uh, so so really, there's no there's no money to be made on an app, if you will. Uh, it's it's basically just getting the word out, as you put it. Right, right. I would say. I mean, you can technically make money with an app. I mean. Many people have done it, but there's also, it's really hard to predict a clear winner. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we here at Subsplash, we're actually a design consulting firm, mm -hmm. um, and the church app is a platform we've created for the church. But traditionally, we'll work with Microsoft, T-Mobile, Expedia, building really high-end user experience software. And we've also built a few apps in-house, such as Luminance. It's a photo editing app that, you know, we made as a charged app, and we made it free for a while, and it shot to one of the top 100 apps in the App Store. So, you know... But you never know how, how successful your app's going to be. So, you know, you can charge, you can make your money back. But really, with, with churches and, and those focused on getting their content out, we strongly would recommend, you know, don't worry about uh, trying to make your money back. Worry about getting, you know, your message out. Worry about getting, you know, the gospel out. Mm -hmm. and, and let me ask you, how should a church go about shopping for an app? I mean, uh, you guys obviously have... Uh, have have mm -hmm. you know are are on the cutting edge and and, and right there yeah. are there certain questions churches should be app, asking app developers that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. There's some some really key questions to ask. Um, I know if if you're doing media, you know you want to make sure that it's done well. Mm -hmm. So you know thinking through those things. Hey, we've got video. Can we actually play video inside of an app? Well, there's some really strict rules with video uh, by Apple. So you actually can't play a video over 10 minutes inside of an app um, unless you're either A, on Wi-Fi, or B, you encode it to this really particular file format uh, that makes it so your video doesn't buffer, doesn't drain battery life, uses data efficiently. Uh, so we, we've actually created you know one of the first and still one of the very few Apple-approved video encoders, so you can actually play full-length video. And then audio, you want to make sure that you know, if you're going to play audio in an app, that it looks good, that it feels right. So do do the research to make sure that it's going to be a good tool. Because you know, just like websites, there can be a good website and there can be a bad website, and there is a big difference in terms of you know how people are using that. Uh, so I would say definitely do the research to see you know what fits. Um, make sure that you're not you know overpaying, and make sure that you know you're getting what you pay for. So you know there may be um, you know we've had a lot of groups come to us that have either had an app built elsewhere or tried to build it in house that just wasn't quite um, you know doing it. So so we would then build them an app on our platform. So really, what we've tried to focus on um, is the full suite of what does a church need. So that's for the media players, um, blog readers, event listings, Bibles, social sharing, online giving. Make sure that your app has has all the tools that you need, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to to communicate your message. So there's a lot of research to do um, inside of it, you know, and it really depends too. Sometimes churches are looking for something really, really custom, which then you're going to need a budget for it. You know, whether somebody's building it in house or maybe you need to pay, you know, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars to develop it. Um, that's usually not where most ministries are. 
Uh, so that's where kind of our, our solution, we've tried to make it as affordable as possible. Um, but really do the research to make sure that each feature uh, accomplishes what you're looking to, to do. Mm -hmm. And is there some sort of association or some sort of clearinghouse where people would be able to find out more about uh, church apps in general, or is there kind of an apps news or something so people could do the research? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, there, it's such a new thing that there's not really as much of a you know a media central centralized place uh, focused around church apps in specific. Um, you know, when we kind of launched, we were the first to do it, and now there there have been other groups you know building apps for churches. Um, but it's just kind of you know doing the research. Most people find us because they've seen some of the apps we've done. Maybe they've downloaded you know Elevation Church, or maybe they've downloaded. Um, you know, Saddleback or International House of Prayer or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Billy Graham or, you know, any one of the apps and they've seen it and they say, that's what we want. So um, that's kind of been the, the biggest way uh, people find out what they want to do. And I would, I would definitely suggest that as well. Make sure you've interacted with an app that would be similar to the one you're trying to do or that it has features because um, there's a lot of, you know, there's groups just like a website that may say they do something, but maybe they're just pulling, you know, in a website or maybe their feature isn't quite as interactive. Um, so think through when I'm using this, you know, myself, would I enjoy this? Is this something that, yeah. you know, I need and I want? Yeah, yeah, the good, yeah. that's a good point. Um, and then when people search for apps, you know, when I go on the, the, the Android market on my phone and I, um, and I search around, um, are there, uh, is there kind of a, um, uh, I'm thinking of the term that, that makes it come up quicker in the search SEO that is, is in, that's yeah. important in market searches? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, I mean, your church name, it's kind of like a website. You need to reserve the actual name of your church in okay. the App Store. So, to some degree, the early adopters are getting, you know, higher, higher visual appearance. Um, so, you know, using the proper words for not only what your ministry is called um, to make sure people can easily find it. You don't want it to be too tricky of a name. And then, yeah, in the text of uh, the de app description, you want to put in the keywords. So whether it's church, whether it's the name of your city, um, read, you know, maybe there's an acronym for your church or an abbreviation or, or whatever you have. Uh, make sure you put those in there because you want people to be easily be able to find it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, listen, um, that's kind of the, uh, any, I always like to leave room at the end, Chris, for any questions that you might have, anything that you, you think I haven't brought up that you think people should know about church apps yeah. um, and let you yeah. share that. For sure. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, there's really so much to, to explore with apps. It is mm -hmm. kind of the new frontier um, mm -hmm. of technology. So, uh, you know, ultimately I, I think it, it is something that we will continue to see more and more of. So, don't, you don't necessarily have to rush into getting an app. Um, it is a good reminder to do your research, you know, if it's something that even fits your organization. But if it does, if you do have that content, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something to look at and something to consider as we've seen, you know, the growth trend go and, and now where we've done, you know, thousands of apps for, for churches um, across, you know, iPhone, Android, iPad, um, doing these native apps. Um, and it's a really great tool for, you know, again, not only for people that are, you know, maybe they missed a sermon, and it doesn't replace church community in any way. It's not. It's not this thing that if they do this, people won't come to church. That's not the heart behind it. But it's a way to access information, a way to access you know good gospel content, a way for people to stay connected to the community. We have churches using you know the app platform for a number of different reasons. You know, not only the media side and some of the things I've highlighted, but maybe they have small group curriculum that they want to put into the app, put PDFs in there, put news in there. Maybe they're integrating with some other software, you know, that we integrate with such as, you know, the city. It's a church, you know, social networking site where people can put that into your church app. So there's so many ways for people to use it, and you want to have good reason behind your app where people actually, uh, they want to keep reopening it, keep using it. Um, so those are the keys, and you know, you never know what could happen. We've seen great successes with apps where, you know, several apps for churches that have several hundred thousand downloads, you know, on iPhone alone, which is incredible because, you know, there's no church alone that has... Uh, you know, more than maybe 25,000 people in it, which which is a very large mega church in and of itself. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's wonderful for us to see the way people are finding these church apps, using them, um, interacting with them, and it's all about the kingdom. That's what we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris Sharp uh, with Subsplash with the church app. Thanks for being with me on Church Next. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Chris.